Hi YouTube, it's Janelle here. In this video, I'm gonna let you guys in on a conversation that I had with one of my BFFs, Guyanne, who is um, an amazing person, honestly, one of the most influential people in my life. I met her way back when I was just a classroom teacher fresh out of college, um, and she was one of the first friends that I made who worked at the same school that I was teaching at. So she taught the classroom right next door to the classroom where I was teaching in the same hallway. And we quickly became friends. We later became roommates. Um, we, were, we were working together, living together, and going to grad school together all at the same time. So we were literally attached at the hip, and we got to know each other really well. So she kind of has more insight on the kind of like person that I was before I started my whole um, financial journey. And I thought it would just be a really good conversation to have with her to have like a heart to heart and post it on the channel so that you guys can see, um, you know, the receipts, because I'm not lying when I tell you guys I used to be a hot mess. You know, I post a lot of videos on the channel about um, the changes that I've made and the budgeting and the saving and the getting debt free. But there was a time when who you know, the way that I was before all those things, um, it was really messy and I didn't know a lot about personal finance. So we talk about that. We talk about her and her journey where she is now and, um, which is currently not working. So, you know, watch, keep watching to find out like, how is it possible that she's not working and, you know, making a living? She's, you know, only in her early thirties. And, um, we also talked a lot about the mental shift that we made, like how we transitioned from being, you know, regular, regular uh, teachers who spent like most of our paycheck just eating and living and having fun going out and how we shifted our mindset to now become people who are really, really serious about um, financial freedom and financial stability. So... We talk about that and um, yeah, we just have a real heart to heart and I hope that this helps you guys see a little bit more about um, me, my personality, my, my close friends and some of the things that you might not know about me just from watching some of my YouTube videos um, and so keep watching. But if you have any um, questions that you want me to post on my channel and respond to, do call and leave a message because I will post a video response. The number to call me is 774-231-8522 and that is all I'm going to say. So go ahead and check out my conversation with my bestie, Guyanne. Yes. So I'm Guyanne. It's Diane with a G. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. Now we got that out the way. All right. <laughs> I'm from North Carolina. And after I graduated, I moved to New York to teach with Teach for America. And mm -hmm. that is where we so met. met. And we taught at the same school in Brooklyn. We were on the same grade team yep. teaching the third grade. Yep. And I taught for a while, much longer than her. Mm -hmm. And recently I decided to start an online business. So I'm no longer teaching and this is very new for me. Yep. And here I am. Yeah. And so we're in North Carolina right now because I had to come to North Carolina to do a fi personal finance workshop for teachers. And then she's from North Carolina. So she was mm -hmm. just like, I'll come home, visit my family, and then we'll like be there at the same time. So we had the opportunity to like connect and chat and hang out like all weekend, which was really fun. But um, the the one thing I really want to- Go Heels! Heels. <laughs> Woo! UNC is a little crazy with the, with the basketball. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I was able to like experience the UNC versus Duke game, like the mm -hmm. day that they won, like all this stuff. So there's definitely so like North Carolina, like UNC, like culture that I got to see, which was really cool. But the one thing that I really felt like I wanted to make sure we got on my channel before we separated was this like lifestyle that Guyane has created for herself, because a lot of people don't understand this. And obviously I get it. Cause like, you know, we're homegirls and I know the life that, you know, she's built for herself, but I wanted other people to be able to hear her talk about it because it's not very common. And when people hear about it, they're like, wait, what, what do you mean you don't? have a job like you're not mm -hmm. working like how do you make money and so it's just really not um common it's really rare to find somebody who's able to go where they want to go and do what they want to do with their time so um we'll come to that yeah teaser okay. so stay tuned to hear that <laughs> from her but first i want to start with just like how we met so um, I want you to talk about like how did we used to live before we like kind of changed our mindset and started to focus on building wealth for ourselves or like at least kind of becoming financially stable. Yeah. Uh, what was our lifestyle before? Because, you know, I've posted about this before, but I want people to get the receipts from you about my hot messery of a life before I got it together. <laughs> I, I personally wouldn't have called your life a hot mess. I, would. I wouldn't have called mine <laughs> either, but I think we were mostly just going with the the rest of society yeah so like you know in all the facets of your life you have 
people that are doing certain things. So you think about your diet, you have the American diet. What are most people doing? You think about your your mental health, your your financial life. Yep. There are people making the same types of decisions in America and we were doing similar things. So if, you know, we were going shopping all the time, often, yep. I had, we had things in our closets that had the tags on it. We didn't buy it. It was just sitting there wasting money. Yep. We would go out to eat often, spend money on uh, alcohol. Sushi, and what, wine, right. Chinese food, Indian yeah. food. We would order a lot of food online. And like, without... So- I mean, it wasn't too extravagant. It wasn't so crazy, no. But it, we didn't have the mindset of like, oh, I'm making these decisions. I could be doing something different and saving more money and creating a different life for myself with my decisions. No, we never challenged like what we were doing. We never said, well, we what if we didn't that. do this? And what if we did the opposite or even yeah. something different, like in between this and something else? Like we just never questioned it. We were just like, everybody we know orders takeout, order, goes to sushi dinner, drinks a lot of wine, goes to happy hours, goes out to parties on weekends. Takes trips. And, you know, takes trips. Yeah. So we we're going to do it too. That's just what every 20 something that we know who's a working professional is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, now, this was before crazy social media stuff. Like this was before Instagram went wild and like Snapchat, and all this so we didn't have that added pressure so I kind of feel more empathy now for people that are like in their mid-20s or early 20s and starting to work because I just can't even imagine what that's like but I know for us the pressure was real mm-hmm. and um yeah just like we wanted to be part of the social scene and stuff and brunch was a big thing like mm-hmm. how much do we spend on brunch like just to go to brunch with people that we wanted to socialize with we would easily drop like I don't know 60 70 dollars on one brunch one meal. meal because of bottomless and then the entree and then everybody so yeah and you just spend it and you don't question it no it's just how much brunch costs if you you want to do brunch you have to spend that so um which is funny because like a few even like a year or two ago like she was living in china you were in china right and um that was last year that was last year that was last year that was a few months ago that was literally a few months ago but that's not what i was talking about i think i'm talking about before that so she's traveled a lot so no when you were in abu dhabi oh okay she was living in abu dhabi and before that and she we were on the phone we're talking i'm like girl how's abu dhabi like can't believe you moved all the way out there how's life she's like girl these brunch experiences are crazy and so i'm like wow like you can go all the way across the world and we still had that yeah. you still have that right they were paying like a hundred dollars for brunch and they would have these huge like games and activities so people could have this experience but they yeah. were dropping hundreds of dollars so and people would do it like it was nothing you know you just it's what you do if you're going along with the crowd it's right. like everybody else is spending a hundred dollars on brunch i might as well do it too yeah i mean not me i wasn't <laughs> right, but like that's but, what i mean like yeah. If we, if we hadn't changed our mindset, we would have been just, you would have been participating in that and being like, girl, it was amazing. I spent a hundred dollars, but you know, it was brunch though. And like, yeah. we would have just been doing it. So uh, we'll talk about how our mindset, mindset like changed and what we did and stuff. But first I definitely want to stress like how um, that pressure can really get to you because I remember just like people texting being like, you know, are you going to come to brunch? Or like, we're planning this for this person's birthday or for mm-hmm. this and that. And so you just feel this pressure to, you feel like you can't say no. Mm-hmm. Um, but just for anybody who's out there watching, if you're young and you're just trying, maybe you got your first or second job out of college, or maybe you're still in college and you're trying to like, think about how you're going to get your money together when you're out to pay back student loans and credit cards and like get out of debt. You can say no, and you don't have to feel bad about it. Yeah. Uh, you can put yourself first because honestly, until we started doing that, we really didn't really see much success with saving. So, I mean, that's just don't let the pressure make you feel like you have to do anything that you don't want to do. And I feel like the hard part is that you think that you have to say yes to a birthday, a best friend, this, a cousin, a going away, or whatever yeah. it is to show that you love the person. Right. And you feel bad, like, oh, they're going to think that I don't like them, I don't care about that them. I don't love them. And honestly, some people may have some feelings if you don't want to come to their thing yeah. because they're not used to having people say, no, I'm not going to come to this birthday event. So it's like shocking for them. Like, right. oh, you must not like, What do you mean you're not coming? Whatever. You're my best friend. You right. have to be there. Yeah. 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 But you just have to understand that you have to make the, the decision that's best for you. Right. And if your relationship is strong, you can work through it. Yeah. For sure, because all the relationships that I have still in my life that are really strong, Diane included, are people that I can be real with and mm-hmm. say, look, I'm not trying to do X, Y, and Z with my money. I'm trying to do 
this other thing. So if you can understand that and support that and recognize that and respect that, then we're cool. We'll figure it out. We'll make it work. Um, and that and that's, you know, that's how I've maintained a lot of my friendships and relationships. Yeah. It's just like the people that get it and the people that want me to succeed with my money goals. They, of course, they're not going to question that. So, mm-hmm. you know, the real ones will stick around. Um, cool. So let's talk a little bit about how we transition because we used to go shopping, buy food, all the, you know, mm-hmm. all the stuff that we said we did. And then all of a sudden, you know, we were both kind of like on our saving tip. Like yeah. we were really talking about saving and like, how much do you have? Like, did you hit 30 yeah. K yet? Like yeah. we were, so all of a sudden we were having these different conversations and what was, do you, like, what insight do you have about that process? Cause it's kind of hard for me to put it in words. Like what maybe the steps were, or maybe some, I, you things. know, the, 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 the interesting thing is that I don't know if I can speak for your experience. Yeah, exactly they were very different. Yeah, yeah. What, what brought you there. Because we came to it at a time when we was broken up. Yeah, we, up. we had a big fall. We had a big falling out. We had a big fight, y'all. So Ooh. we broke up. It, I don't know how long that lasted. Maybe uh, six months. Yeah. To a, yeah, it wasn't a year. A year. It was less than a year. And in um, that time, we both changed our mindsets. I know. It was and crazy. so for me, I was working consistently in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and then. I stopped working. So I've, I've taken breaks from traditional unemployment for like, I've done this before. So I stopped working and I went to Australia. I went to Sydney to go and live. Right. And my intention when I was in Brooklyn was to go and get a job in Australia. And but, you were talking about how you did research and the minimum wage there was really high. So that was one of the reasons yes. why you picked Australia. Yes. Cool. So you could have got yeah. a job like helping people cross the street and that would have cost charge yeah. paid you eighteen dollars an hour. Right. Like, exactly. Hey, okay. So I thought I was gonna go over there and I was gonna be actually able to save money. So right. I was thinking about it before, right? But then because of the visa that I was on, I couldn't get a job that was interesting to me. So when I got there, I was like, uh, oh, I can get a job in the service industry doing something, but I actually don't want to get out. You wouldn't enjoy, you wouldn't enjoy would, that. You wouldn't right. enjoy it. I wasn't interested in the job, so I ended up just not working for a long period of time. It wasn't um, maybe almost a year yeah, that I didn't work right. that time. And so I was like, okay, I have a, a limited amount of money and I have some credit. And I actually did end up using a lot of credit in that time I had... After not working that stretch, I had ten thousand dollars of credit card debt, okay. and I didn't have any savings left. Left, and I still have my student loans at that uh. point. <laughs> All right? Not it just it just hurts. It just keeps hurting. Like you yeah, just keep yeah, yeah, pulling the scab. Oh, but wow. the only reason why I went in that much debt is because I didn't have that much money to live on right. at the beginning. You didn't have right? enough savings to do that. Exactly. Right. So, but I ended up figuring out. Okay, I can live in this type of you know, not high quality apartment and pay this much for rent. And, oh, I don't have to buy, you know, this, these clothes. I wasn't shopping like that. I was, I, I don't, I may have been thrifting already yeah, at that point, you were doing a lot but of I wasn't, I wasn't buying clothes when I was in Australia. I wasn't going out to eat like that. And I just realized, oh, like this amount of money that I'm spending in Australia this is what I need to live, right? Which is like a, a between like a thousand and two thousand dollars a month, right? right? So you figured out what your bare minimum to yeah. live in a way that you were cool with, frugal right. but not like unacceptable for yeah. you. And then you're like, that's what I need. And then it was like this aha moment, like, oh shoot, I can do that if for I a- keep <laughs> for a if long I keep time. living like this. <laughs> And I go back, and I was about to get a a, a regular uh, a job. If I go back to a job making, you know, seventy, sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year, I can save mad money right. like if I, I live this like this. Way more money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So I think um something you were looking at the other day was about like if you continue to live like you're in debt. Right. Um, and that's essentially what I yeah. continue to do. That's right. And what I still do. That's right. So I think that, I ain't made it, made it. Yet. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let's be real. We're financially stable, but we're not just blowing. We're not just poor. We can be like, oh, mommy, you need a new this. I yeah. got you. Like, okay, we're trying. Yeah. We, we're working on it. But I think for in order for, for you to even be on the track or on the journey towards that, 
the, the mental shift has to happen. So that's mm-hmm. why I want to talk about the mental shift because we are on that path. But um, I think for me, it was kind of like, well, you watched me. Like I was in a miserable job. I was a job that was so unhappy. Like you noticed my cheeks were pale. I would come home from I work. Like, I don't look good. I was losing <laughs> weight. I was just, it was a job that I really yeah. did not expect for it to work out that way and for it to be so uncomfortable and so miserable every day I would go and I just would I would go out to lunch and when I had to come back I would start to feel anxiety and tears would come in my eyes because I had to go back in the building and like I just was like I never want to feel like this in my life so at that moment I realized I can't quit because I depend on this paycheck Mm. and that's when I had to decide like okay how much longer do I have to work here to have enough money to never have to come or to not have to come back even if it's just for a few months that gives me time to get another job and so at that point was when I decided I needed eight thousand dollars that was the number for me that I made a, or that I calculated out that would have made me feel comfortable to leave. Um, wait, so you mean? Yeah. So then I, I decided I'll leave when I have $8,000 saved. Oh. So yeah. as soon as my, at that time I was, I didn't know anything y'all. So I didn't even have a savings account. Um, my checking account at Bank of America at that time, my checkings account had uh, $8,000 from like, mm-hmm. maybe it was like four paychecks or something like that. I waited it out. So like September, October, November, December, before like Christmas break hit, I turned in my resignation. I said, I'm not coming back after two weeks notice. And then after that, I didn't go back. Yeah. And like, it wasn't easy. I was really struggling and I wanted to work, but I couldn't, you know, figure out what I wanted to do. And that time I was trying to shift away from education, but I still was passionate about education. But that's the first time I thought that concept, how much money dollars yeah. do I need to not have to come back and report to work? Yeah. I realized that you could buy your freedom in some yeah. ways. Like, I hate that phrase, but that you could buy your time back. You didn't have to give them your time if you didn't need the money from them. So that was the first time I think I had that idea. I feel like um, it's also been important for me, like this whole thing of not having a nine to five and reporting to work. I've been in situations, multiple situations yeah. where I'm just super stressed out. And I'm, oh, I'm getting emotional just thinking about those times in your life when you are suffering because of your job. Yeah. You know, it, you it, feel so trapped. It takes a physical toll on you. It's crazy it does. because it starts mental and anxiety wise, but then it actually physically takes a toll. I lost weight. I was yeah. white. I was flushed. People were telling me, you don't look well. And it's like, I have to go to a place every day and give them all of my yeah. time, not see my family, not see my friends and not be happy there, not feel one spark of joy, I actually feel complete misery and stress. Mm that really like your body yeah so and it's common too yeah who doesn't know someone who's miserable i hate my boss oh i hate this i don't like going to work but they have to go because they depend on the paycheck and for me it it was also important to say okay how can i get to this place where nobody has this like chain right around my neck like you can't make me do this you can't put these demands on me because at any moment in time, I can leave. That's right. The door is over there. Right. I can walk out that door because right. I don't need your paychecks. Right. If I don't have your paycheck, I'm not going to die. I will be able to, I'm not gonna I die. Will be able to survive. <laughs> that's right. Right. Because I, I have money. This. Right. And and that's the thing. Like a huge safety net or savings account can give you that confidence that right. I will walk out the door. Money, saving money. Money yeah. doesn't solve problems. Money doesn't give you happiness, but it will give you a confidence to make decisions in your best interest in a way right. that you probably wouldn't have done it before right. because you were scared that the income was going to stop and you have no source of income. So right. when you don't de- depend on it, ooh, you'll see how brave you become. Yeah. And so that, for me, that's why I started to, I think, build that confidence. But then we then we started to shift our behaviors in a lot of different ways. Mm-hmm. So we stopped shopping. We stopped going out to eat that much. So when, after we had that big fight, you know, then we finally got on the phone again and we really like forgave each other. We had a big conversation. Mm-hmm. We came back to like, we love each other so much. We not we're not gonna let that big fight like end what we have. So we, we saw each other in person. Never again. ever. Never. Never. Oh my god! I can't believe I almost lost. So you yeah, almost do nothing. I almost lost. It was a blip. It was a blip. Right. It was. It was. It was <laughs> Hiccup, hiccup. It was, it was so small. So, so, but then once we, when we got back together in person, face to face, we started sharing this stuff with each other. Like, oh, what have you been doing? You know, we talked in months. Like, what's your new lifestyle? And I was telling her, like, oh, I've been working out. I've been taking, like, um, my little, oh my goodness, I was taking my 
portable. I was taking my like uh, shake maker. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It was like a neutral <laughs> bullet. Y'all like Google the neutral bullet. Like it was one of those, but it was like a boot like version of it. And you could just like plug <laughs> in. So I would pack you that. have a rubber band that you put on <laughs> it. I had a rubber band on it. Look, I was, you know, making it work. I was being resourceful. And I, I tied the rubber band around it and stuff. And then I would put it in my bag with some fruit and stuff. Then when I got to the gym, like right after my workout, I wanted to like take, have a shake. So I would plug it in at the bathroom, put the little fruit in, turn it, let it just, just, just let her make a shake and she was with me when we went to a class I was like girl look this is what I've been doing and she was like that's not a portable like that's not a portable <laughs> blender girl it's supposed to be in your kitchen you're not supposed to take that anyway so but it was really funny because we started that's not what I said I said girl give me some smoothies <laughs> <laughs> make one for me make one for me girl hook me up so we like, but basically we started to, she started to notice like, oh, like all these little things that you're doing to like be a little more frugal, to like save money. Cause I could have stopped at any number of places that sell smoothies in New York city. Come on, y'all. Okay, $10. Yeah. $10, you know, any one of these bougie, you know, shake places. I mean, if you go there, that's to make you bougie, but like, you know, <laughs> $10 for a shake, like, come on, it's the same thing. You can blend it up. So that those little things I started, we started to notice and we started to realize, oh, like we're, 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 on, the we're same. on the same page. Yeah. Um, and then we just started sharing resources, articles, links, books. We, you were telling mm -hmm. me like about TED Talks to watch. I would share you on yeah. stuff. And we started talking about investing. We both got on like Wealthfront, Betterment. Like we just, yeah. it, it just started to happen. Cause the thing is, once your friends are on your wavelength, you, you kind of, you level up together. Like y'all want to like encourage each other to like do these things to be, make mm -hmm. each other better. So yeah, maybe that's just kind of like how the mindset shift happened. Um, mm -hmm. And then the behavior followed. When your mindset changes, your behavior follows, right? Um, and I think yeah. it's it's really important because the people around you are going to dictate. They're not going to dictate, but they're going to influence your behavior. Yeah. So yeah. if you know, so we did. That's we right. both came to it together, but I feel like having the support and the environment where That's it's right. like. It's not really okay to be spending all your money because it's not a smart thing to do. Like That's we right. want freedom. Yep. Give us us free. Yes. <laughs> we want yes. freedom. So like, you know, it's not like we're we're encouraging each other right. to like go down the path together yeah. and strengthening our yeah. skills and, and then finances. and the thing is too, like I think I was there financially in terms of like I just knew I wanted to cut back on costs. So I was like on a budget and I knew I was safe. But you had like a different mental level that I think pushed me and encouraged me further because you would be like you know, telling me things that I would be like, oh, wow. Okay. Like, listen, you know, like if I have a birthday party and I, and you, and you don't, and you can't come or you don't want to come, like say no and be honest with me. And I'll be like, mm -hmm. damn girl, but you're my best friend. I feel like I would have to go. And then you'd be like, no, don't think like that. Like, why do people think like that? And then we would be like, hmm. And then we would th to think about like, <laughs> well, society makes us feel like we are obligated to the people that we love. And then we yeah. would be like, well, why don't we push back on that and challenge that idea? Yeah. That's not true. You can love somebody unconditionally and not be able to make it to their birthday party. Like, let's stop accepting these myths you know and so yeah. then we had to so start having deeper conversations on a social level rather than just thinking about the money and i think that really helped me go further because i always felt like i had to do stuff for my family mm. and my friends and i eventually when i let that go i was like whew, only person that i am obligated to is me yeah. and i love that 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 feeling is great because i i put myself first and, and some people consider that to be selfish but trust me it's not you have you can't serve anyone to you serve yourself you can't um, so yeah, so that's, that's amazing. True. So tell us how the heck are you able to afford? Like right now, Guyane is currently like based in Mexico ish. Like she's in North Carolina right now, yes. but visiting her family. But so we talked about how she was in Abu Dhabi for a while teaching. She was in China teaching. She was in Korea teaching. We taught in Brooklyn together. Uh, you were in Australia mm -hmm. and now she's in Mexico and Playa del Carmen. Some, some Carmen, you know, like, <laughs> come on, these places where it's like, wow. So how, so if somebody, you told somebody that they go, what? Oh my goodness. You, you're not working. You're just yeah. in the beach in Mexico. Like how, how are you making this happen for you? So how's that possible? Mm -hmm. I think it's two parts, right? It's like I have no three parts maybe. I have a plan for how I will make money in the future. Okay. So it's not like I'm not working and yeah. I'm just gonna be chilling. Right. No, I'm actively um working on starting up a business which will give me the the revenue. the revenue yeah. later, give me the profit income later. So that's the the first part. Um the second part is that for the last, I guess it's been like three or four years since we've like shifted the mindset around. Yeah, because I started that. the channel in 2015. Yeah. And it's 2019. So about three and a half, four years now. So when I came back from Australia, I I think I was in about $25,000 worth of debt. And that was combined credit card, which student was about 10000 Okay. And student loans, which was 
um, around 15,000. Okay. So I was very intentional and savvy about how I attacked the debt. Like I made sure that I like had a very low cost of living. Mm -hmm. Um, So she was renting a room before we had an apartment where we each had our room and her room was really big and it was attached to the backyard. That was almost a thousand dollars a month in Brooklyn. Then she went to significantly less. Like I think your room was like four or $500, maybe $500. So like basically half. And um, And in New York, that's, that's crazy. Like when you're living are, in a room yeah. in in, a, in somebody's apartment. So you no, no no no. The crazy part is that I'm paying five hundred dollars. Oh. And my coworkers is paying making the same $1, amount $1. as me. Are they might pay fifteen hundred, right. a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars for right. their rent. Right. So I was like, okay. The difference is how much you're able to save and use to attack debt or to save. So yeah. They're, and that's something that they're not able to do just because of where they chose to live and how much they chose to pay for it. Right. So yeah. I changed, I had $25,000 in debt. I changed my lifestyle. And so then over the course of three years, I grew my net worth by $75,000. Wow. So before I quit working, I had around um, $50,000 in net worth. Right. So um, now, so I have this money that I can live off of, but also I'm not spending that much money. Right. right, because so the same way that I was living the past three years, I'm continuing to right. live that to live way. That frugally. So I'm not spending a lot of money, and I'm in Mexico, which has a, a lower cost a of, lower living of living than right. the U.S. And that was a part of my decision to go to Mexico. I knew that I didn't want to go to the U.S. and be forced to have Pay a regular rent, job, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, sooner than I wanted to because I wanted to have all this time, time, all my time to develop myself and to develop my business. Yeah. Wow. So it's so it's definitely the like the building up of the amount of money that you know that or you feel that you need or that you know you're going to need to be able to have free time. But then the key part of it after that is once you're able to do it, you got to continue to live that frugally because the second you start to pull out of that account, you're depleting your ability to make it for a longer time. So it's not, you're not going to be able to have longevity with your freedom if you're running out of funds again. And I, oh, okay, now I got to fill up that account again because I got to get another job where I got to pick a night job or a weekend job. So definitely like maintaining the, the minimal lifestyle even after you have the amount of money saved, um, which is what I did. Like, you know, I've talked about in my videos how I paid off my $20,000 of credit card debt. And then after that, I pretended I still had the same amount of debt. Mm-hmm. And every month I would take 50% of my income and I would continue to pretend it was going to debt, but it was yeah. actually going to a high yield savings account until I hit, you know, my goal for my savings. And then after that, I continue to do it and invest that, you know, five, $600 a month. So I've been investing five, $600 a month since I, since three years ago. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that's, that's a lot of sacrifice because mm-hmm. imagine if I had five or six hundred extra dollars to spend every month in in ninety that's days. That's a trip. That's a in I ninety mean, days. I have yeah. fifteen hundred to two thousand yeah. dollars that I could spend as a twenty something year old in New York City or anywhere right. in the world. Two thousand extra dollars in a matter of weeks. Come on, you can do a lot. And so there's a certain lifestyle that I'm choosing not to live, even though I'm everybody on my Instagram feed and Facebook is posting stuff. Yeah. I'm choosing not to participate in that because I know that I have specific goals. Um, so that's that. But I, when I say stuff like this, because I travel to schools a lot and I talk to young people a lot and I say this, a lot of times they will say to me like, well, that's like, how do I know I'm going to even be here in 20 years or 30 years from now? Like, I can't be, I'm young. I have to live for now, for today. And that is one school of thought. Like there are a lot of people out there who really do believe in that, like live for today. YOLO, you don't even know if you're going to get it tomorrow because maybe they've had experiences with people in their life that they've lost or like Mm -hmm. they've experienced a lot of young people in their, in their life, you know, going, disappearing and stuff. So like, or disappearing, but like, you know, dying, passing away. So I could, that could impact you. You know what I mean? Like, so I think if you have that mindset, sometimes you might have to think more about goals that you want to set so that you can shift your short term to a long term mindset. I don't know. Yeah. And I I feel you like some people are on this mindset of like I'm living now, which I get. But at the same time, I feel like we've also developed ourselves so that we are more aware of what's important to us. Right. So like, yes, I have today. So I'm going to go out in nature. Right. I have today, so I'm going to develop myself so I can be the best person I can be. And like, so reading this book for a couple hours a day, 
I'm going to get so much more joy out of that and much more fulfillment than going and spending hundreds of dollars at the mall. Right. So I think that's, that's another part to consider for people that aren't, for people who have that type of mindset that, Oh, I need to enjoy my life. So I need to spend money going along with this. (laughs) A lot of times when you are spending, it's not actually about enjoying your life. It's about covering up your hurt. That's right. And so I think there's a lot of exploration you can do yep, to when you stop out. when you stop swiping and covering up your your pain with like just being busy and spending money and yep. try to compete with people. You you look at yourself and and that's where you can start to heal right. yourself right. and become a better person and become more content with who you are in all right. of your beauty and all of your flaws. Diane actually taught me a lot, and she might not even remember this, but. Little things that I've done in my life, or that I still tend to do. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm still working on this. But like one small example for y'all, like we would talk all the time. Like we were living together. We were teaching together. We were in grad school together. We were attached at the hip, y'all. And so there would be times where we'd be like on the train and we'd be talking and talking. And then Diane would say something and I would just cut her off and say something. And then she would try to interject and say something, continue her point. And then I would just cut her off and say something else. And then she'd be like... Okay, like, and I could tell, like, I could tell, like, she was trying to talk, but I'm, I'm so extroverted, I'm, I'm so like center of attention. Look at me, like, I want to talk all the time, and that was something I had. I've been doing that for so long to cover something, right? To like mm. just keep talking, and I, I didn't mm. take take the time to think about why am I doing this? Mm. Why can't I pause and listen? Mm. What is it about? you know listening to people that makes me uncomfortable and so it's it's better to just talk and like cover up any awkward silence or just take the air time like what was that about me and I I really wasn't really dealing with that Mm -hmm. um and then I'm not really good at communicating so instead of using you know a small amount of words that I wanted to use to be make a clear point I would talk in circles and be repeat things and just talk a lot and Mm -hmm. so Guyana was one of the first people in my life that was just like you know, you keep cutting me off. Like, you don't let people talk and calling me out on it, but not in a certain nasty way um, until it was, it got to a point where it was like, you know, at one point you literally had to, you, you just stopped talking to me. And we were on the train and like, this might sound mean, but I don't think she meant it to be mean. I think she needed to do it to make a point to me. And this was one of the areas in my life that I feel she helped me to reflect on was like, damn, if it got to the point where Guyane just straight up on, didn't want to talk to me, it must be bad. And that's when I really thought to myself, what's going on with me internally. But we were on the train and you were talking and I kept talking and then you said, look, you like you just cut me off again. I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, okay, go. And then you were talking, I cut you off again. Mm. And then I was like, wait, sorry, but what were you saying? And you were like, I'm not gonna keep talking because you just keep cutting me off. And then you mm. just stopped talking. The rest of the train ride, I was like, for real, come on, Diane, I'm sorry, like just keep uh-huh. talking. And you were like, no, like I'm not. And like, yes, it sounds like, oh my God, that's so mean. <laughs> It was maybe. I'm getting emotional. I know, it hurt. But you know what? I needed that because mm. I, I don't stop to think. And, and I'm still to this day not the best listener. So, like, I, I have to keep working on that because dude, you can't be the kind of person who won't shut up. Like, a lot of people love Gary Vee, but some people like critique Gary Vee because he doesn't listen. Mm. Just to talk, talk, talk. And I don't want to become that kind of a person. Mm. I love Gary Vee, though. But, like, he knows. <laughs> he knows he talks too much. So, that's one of the things where I think, like, if you just listen to. You know, if you just watch and listen, observe yourself, you'll start mm. to realize, oh, where is that coming from? Why is that happening? Mm. And then you can kind of dig deeper. Um, so, yeah, I think I've become a lot better of a communicator, but I'm still obviously working on talking less and listening more. So, but I and I think I think you're doing so good. Thank you. Because <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes I think about it because I'm like, wow. She's really listening to me. <laughs> like, you're really yeah. listening to me. And I know how much she doesn't like when people talk slowly. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my so God. I'm like, wow, you listen to me all the time. And you know, I'm just like. Hmm. So you got that North Carolina brain. I, well, I got first that of all, Brooklyn brain. I mean, I got I speak like I'm a North Carolinian. Right. But also, I'm like, I, I might pause, I pause yeah, a lot. More than anybody intuitive. else you know, maybe. Yeah. I don't, more yeah. than a lot of people, right? And it takes me a lot of time to get out my thoughts. And you just listen. And so I think you're doing so good. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm glad we had this opportunity for me to say thank you for that because, you you. know, it's beautiful. No, it is. It is. And like, and and it's just a lot of times what I noticed about this friendship and a lot of the other friendships that I have in my life um, and relationships in general is 
how many people sit down and look each other in the eye and like have a conversation like that where they say thank you like you taught me to shut up and listen or Mm -hmm. thank you because you listened to me and like Mm -hmm. I just feel like I grew up in a neighborhood where it was like high crime high poverty mostly Dominican Puerto Rican and black and Brooklyn back in the day where Brooklyn was not gentrified yet so there was a lot of like Mm -hmm. crime and a lot of like you know whatever the neighborhood didn't have the best reputation so a lot of times in those types of communities there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of trauma so people sometimes use violence and harsh words and language to to get by and so I never really learned to um to have that kind of like conversation to like have Mm. a positive conversation where you say thank you these are things I appreciate about you and these are and so and I think I learned that a lot through some of the like this relationship and a lot of other relationships where they were healthy and so um I think yeah I think it's very important to not just think about changing your your financial mindset but also think about surrounding yourself with people that are going to help you have a better uh like life mindset like Mm. approach to life and the way you view life it's either life is out to get me and everything's always miserable or it's the complete opposite. Life is amazing. Things happen, but I'm going to approach it with a problem solving mindset rather than a victim kind of mindset. So, um, yeah. Amen. One of those people. <laughs> um, all right. So we talked about, about a lot. We yeah. talked about a lot. Um, if people want to find you, I know Guyane's definitely not online. Let's talk about, mm-hmm. let's talk about how Guyane never has a cell phone. <laughs> I, when I'm trying to connect with her. I got to be like, do I email her? How do I find her? She always finds me, but like, you know, uh, that's been an interesting <laughs> thing too. Like not only is she nomadic, but she's kind of been okay with not having a cell phone. A lot of people are not okay with that. And they're connected to their cell phones and connected to their devices. So mm-hmm. that's, maybe that's been a huge piece too. And like you changing the way you live, but mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's not really online, but if they did want to find you, um, you see what you're up to, whatever, like how could people do that? Are you on Facebook anymore? Are you on? People um, could email me. Okay. Email. Yeah. Cool. You want to put my Yeah. Email? I'll put her email in the description okay. if you're interested in asking her questions about her experience, her life, her ideas, her thoughts, like email her. Um, I'll put it in the description box below and thank you so much for being on and chatting with me. I love you so I love you much. too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for checking wait, wait, wait. it out. We should do a, um, oh, what, what? oh, it's a heart. <laughs> <laughs> so cheesy. It's real love, y'all. <laughs>